Hi, I'm Lisa O'Keefe and I'm a parishioner here at St. Patrick's and I am so excited to be able to invite you to an incredible event that our parish is hosting for you this coming week. If you heard Father's homily last weekend, he mentioned a Blessed Carlo Acutis. Blessed Carlo was just recently named a Blessed in October of 2020. He died in 2006 at the age of 15 and he's already on his path to being a canonized saint in our Catholic Church. When he was 11 years old, he took his love for the Eucharist and his love and talent for computers and he combined them to start creating a website called the Eucharistic Miracles of the World. This 11 year old scoured the earth for all these Eucharistic miracles that he could take pictures and the stories and combine them so that people could learn more about the Eucharistic heart of Jesus. After he died in 2015, there were two bishops that came and took his website and made a 160 panel display of these beautiful pictures and stories from all over the world, all these different countries, all these different centuries of these Eucharistic miracles and to put on display. And this is what our parish is hosting here at St. Patrick's. Now just to be clear, at every single Mass there is a Eucharistic miracle where the host and the blood actually become the body and blood of Jesus as he is right here in the monstrance. The difference with these Eucharistic miracles is that you can see physically the change if, of the host into flesh and blood visibly. These pictures are amazing and I invite you to come and find out more about all of these stories. One of my favorites is the story of a priest who is traveling from Germany to Rome on a pilgrimage because he was having a, a, a crisis of faith in the Eucharist and he was a pious man and he was a prayerful man and on his way to Rome he stopped at the Cathedral of St. Christina because he adored her and, and her faith and her martyrdom and he asked her for strength and wisdom and strength in his, his belief in the Eucharist. After he asked her intercession he prayed Mass and as he held up the host and said the words of consecration, the host actually started to bleed and it dripped over his hands and onto the corporal, the, the, the cloth that's on the altar. He didn't know what to do, he kind of panicked and he decided to just end mass and he took the host and he carried it away, but leaving drops on the marble floor. He took it to the Pope who explained what was happening and they found that it was actually a miracle of the host turning to flesh and blood. Many years, that was in 1263, and many, many years later they did analyze this blood. They found that it was type AB, which is the universal donor for blood. They found that it was from a man from the Middle East, that it was living flesh and blood, cells were alive, and that it was heart tissue from the left ventricle myocardium, which is the part of the heart that pumps oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. What's amazing about these miracles is that these same facts are true across many that have been analyzed. And you can come and see these pictures. All of us have hearts that have been wounded. We have parts of us that have hard time believing in certain things about our faith, about the Lord. We all have room to learn more about the heart of Jesus. And this is one opportunity that we can take to go on pilgrimage short distance from our homes, to go on pilgrimage and take our hearts, take our intentions, take the people that we need to pray for and bring them to the heart of Jesus who continuously reveals himself through his body and blood in our world, in different countries, to different people, in different places and times. This is a time to answer the call of Jesus' heart. I mentioned that the, when the priest turned away, he dropped, blood, he dropped blood onto the floor. It was a marble floor. Normally, what happens when liquid drops on marble? It sits there. 
What's unique about this is that the blood fell onto the marble and penetrated the stone. They still broke it open and they found that the blood soaked into the marble. Even the hardest of hearts, the stoniest of wills can be penetrated by the blood of Jesus. And that's how he calls us to himself over and over again. So I just invite you to make room this coming week for a pilgrimage to visit our Lord and see these Eucharistic miracles. And let the heart of Jesus penetrate your heart.